so you're dealing with grief, loss. You're coping with it, hopefully, <laughs> or trying to, right? Um, I hope that you are having a wonderful Thanksgiving. Um, I'm recording this on Thanksgiving morning. Um, and, uh, you know, it is a wonderful day to give thanks. Um, I am a Christian, so I give thanks to God, but maybe you're watching this and you're not, or you're of another faith and religion. <clears throat> but regardless, this is a day, as, especially here in America, where we set aside everything just to have a meal with friends and family, to give thanks. Um, but you know, something that's really been on my heart, uh, has been the fact that a lot of people these days, I, I feel like, well, in, in every day they have, but people are dealing with loss. Um, I, I feel like a lot more now, especially the way that things are in the economy and whether it's from, um, you know, the virus that went around a couple of years ago or still going around and then the flu and everything else or whatever. Maybe it has nothing to do with all that and it's just loss of a loved one. Um, maybe you've had a falling out with a family member or a friend and you're just not, you're not connected. Maybe you don't have anyone to spend this day with. Regardless, what we would all have in common, especially the older that we get, is that we deal with grief and loss. And uh, in thinking about this, um, I actually, a thought came to mind uh, from the illumination of the Holy Spirit of coping and dealing with grief, loss, and death. So, if you have your Bible, uh, if you would, turn with me to John 11. And we're going to be looking at the story of Lazarus. I'm going to be reading first out of John 11, verses 1 through 6. And uh, if you would just join me for this little study here, we ask that the Lord would lead us and guide us through his word. So I'm going to start reading. I'm reading out of the New King James. Um, if Whatever Bible you have, bring it, and let's read together. 1 through 6, John chapter 11. Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary who appointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. If you, if you if you notice here, they were extremely they were extremely connected. Jesus was dear friends with these people. When Jesus heard that, he said, "This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it." Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Once again, John's telling us that he's very close friends here. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. You know, it's really interesting here because as humans, we're like, well, wait a second. <laughs> If he really cares about these people, why is he staying in this place for two more days? You know, why? Why? I mean, and we're not, the point of this is not to look at what he was doing in the place he was in, but it's the point that he told the messengers from Lazarus's sisters, he told them this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God that the Son of God may be glorified through it. So already we see there is a purpose to the worry, the anxiousness, and the anxiety of Lazarus's uh, sisters, Mary and Martha. I think we've all been there, haven't we? <laughs> very anxious, very worried. God, <laughs> are you going to help us? Are, are you going to bring healing? Are you... Are you going to be the son of righteousness with healing in your wings? And, you know, so then 
things keep going on and we're like, okay, <laughs> Jesus, where are you? And we're still praying and we're still, we're still waiting. They waited for two days. <clears throat> it's, it, the point of it is that Jesus already knew the outcome. He already knew it. Already. He, <laughs> what he was trying to get them to do was to trust in him, keep faith, even when everyone else was not. That, and that's the hardest thing for us, I believe. I, I, I think that it's, it's hard for us to see God's purpose in these times of anxiety and worry and what's the meaning of all of this. And, you know, keep in mind, especially, the, you know, imagine how hard it was for them. They've literally seen Jesus do miracle after miracle, and they know that they know as they confess that that he is the Christ, the, the Messiah, the Son of God. Um, and so imagine how hard it was for them. Dropping down here to verse 11, John eleven eleven, These things he said, and after that, he's talking to the disciples here. These things he said, and after that, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. Then his disciples said, Lord, if, if he sleeps, he will get well. Yeah. However, Jesus spoke of his death, it says, but they thought he was speaking about taking rest and sleep. <laughs> and then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. <laughs> They're not getting the point. He's clarifying like, look, y'all, this is the story here. And then he says, I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Then Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us go also that we may die with him. Now, verse 16 there, when Thomas says that, what, he, what he's meaning is that Lazarus and his sisters lived in a place where the... Um, the Jewish hierarchy, the, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, King Herod, all of them, you know, they don't like Jesus, obviously. I mean, at this point, I believe Herod's already had John the Baptist beheaded. So <laughs> they're like, you know, whatever these people are, we don't like them. And it's that bad to where Thomas is like, all right, well, we'll go ahead with him. You know, we're going to <laughs> we'll head on down the road. He's something's going to happen here. We'll, but we'll die. We're going to die with our Lord. But once again, there it's that to me is a mark of when we are so involved in what's happening around us that we take our eyes off of Jesus. Jesus said, "I am the way, the truth, and the life." And this is really proof of that because the disciples are looking at this entire situation when the the Christ, the Son of God, is right there next to them, with them, talking to them, walking with them. And even after the years that they've spent with him, they're still looking at him and not grasping it. And so well, that's what he tells them. He says, no, <laughs> he's not literally sleeping he is going to be well, but, you know, <laughs> it's it's not by me physically healing him. Which is a good thing for us all to remember is that we cannot... And y'all, I'm no different than you. I'm speaking from experience here. It is so easy to get wrapped up. It's so easy to get wrapped up in our troubles, our trials, our tribulations, um, our, our hurt, our grief. Uh, trust me, uh, we, you know, we have an empty chair this uh, now at the holidays and my wife and I's family. Um, as every family has a few empty chairs at some point, but, uh, you know, we also have a, a couple other empty chairs, not due to death, but... Uh, other life troubles. We are no different than any one of you. 
Um, and so <laughs> it's basically the point here of <sighs> turn, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look at him, focus on him, remain in him. The disciples made the mistake of looking at everything around them so closely that they forgot. I mean, they didn't forget who Jesus was, but they took they took for granted who he was. I'll say that. And even in our misunderstanding, I think that that's, this is a good takeaway point for this part of the passage, is that even though the disciples were misunderstanding him and all that, Jesus still was leading them, guiding them. He was actually leading and guiding Lazarus's family, even though they didn't feel like it at the time. But even though people are not quite fully grasping him, he's still leading and guiding them. And that, that is so powerful. In your grief, in your suffering, in life, your mistakes, your, your, uh, what you get right, your good days, your bad days, the fact that Jesus will still come at our side and, and take us by the hand and say, look, it's all right. Trust in me. Come with me. Isn't that powerful? And friend, if you don't have Jesus today, then you have no idea what I'm talking about. I don't care how smart you are. You do not comprehend what I'm telling you. Life without Jesus Christ is no life at all. You say, oh, I live and breathe. I can't, you know, I'm, I'm living life. Friend, you are not living without Jesus Christ. Sure, you're living, you're breathing, you're eating, you're sleeping, you're drinking. You know, maybe you're, you have a great job, you have a great relationship or marriage, or you have children, whatever. You have a great family. It does not matter all of those things will pass away. And without Jesus Christ, you'll pass away with them. Here we have no continuing city. But we seek one to come. And so, <laughs> just, just in this whole entire story, the whole point of this is that Lazarus dies. And that's one of the things I love about the scriptures, y'all, is that is, men, it, this is real. This isn't some fairy tale story here. There's so many examples of everyday real life. Um, it, it's just incredible. But even in spite of all of the faults and failures that we have read so far in this passage, Jesus is still leading them. Uh, I'm going to read 17, and then we're going to drop down to verse 21. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Now, y'all... That means Jesus is seeing it. Jesus already knew it. You go back to verse 4. I'm going to read that again. When Jesus heard that, that Lazarus was sick, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. So, y'all, he, he already knows. that, And that's another wonderful thing about our God, about our Lord, is, is that... <laughs> He already knows the ending of whatever you're going through. Another reason to trust him and another reason to tell yourself, heck with you, you don't know what's going on here. Um, it, it's so, so powerful. In spite of all of this and the grief and the suffering, Jesus is still in control of the entire situation. Verse 21, now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if if you had been here, my, my brother would not have died. <laughs> but even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Verse 24, Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. <laughs> She's, you know... We all of us have been there. It's like, yeah, God, I know, I, I know what you're saying, and I do believe you, God. But still, yet, if you had done something here, this wouldn't have happened. And Jesus said to her, "I am the resurrection 
and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? It is a test of faith. Friends, your trials, your struggles, all of that. It, be thankful for them. And I'm going to tell you why. You say, thankful for grieving the loss of my mom? Thankful for grieving the loss of my dad who, you know, let's... Hey, let's make it really bad. Maybe you only knew your dad for a little bit. Maybe you went through the majority of your life not knowing him, and you maybe you lucked out and got to meet him in his later years, and you're sitting there this Thanksgiving, and you're like, you know, it would have been nice to have had more time. It would have been so nice. Why did, you know, I'm a Christian, but why did why did all this happen this way? Why couldn't God have granted me one more Thanksgiving, one more Christmas? He is the resurrection and the life. You've got to remember that. Isaiah 45, it, you know, Job, the, the Lord gives, the Lord takes away. Everything is God's. It is, and it is his to do with it as he pleases. But y'all, it is never, his plans are never to hurt us. And the idea that Martha's faith here is being tested, what she believes is being tested, means that Jesus had confidence in her. So whenever you're being tested in your trials, it's actually a wonderful thing. Be thankful for it. Um, that's what I've come to know. And I, I'm only 34 years old, but trust me, I know what trials are like. I I have some thorns in my side. Trust me. But he says, do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. Once again, extremely powerful. And, and he says, okay, do you, do you still believe me in spite of your situation? And she says, yes, I do believe you. Verse 32, we're going to drop on down here. We don't have much left, y'all. Um, I don't want to take too much of your time, but just stick with me. Thank you guys for watching so far. I really, really appreciate it. This has really been on my heart. And uh, I know that at some point, even if it's not the holidays, I'm in a jacket. It's fall. It's Thanksgiving morning. But, you know, one day someone's going to watch this, and my hope and prayer is that God uses it to... <sighs> to just help them hold on a little longer and to keep hoping and trusting in him. Because you will see the salvation of the Lord. I promise you that. One day you will see it. You will understand and you will find meaning in your suffering. Verse 32. Then when Mary, now we're on to Mary here. Then when Mary came where Jesus was, and saw him, she, she fell down at his feet, saying, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Fell down at his feet. <laughs> she, I, I'm not going to dramatize that for you, but, I mean, you can imagine it in your mind. I mean, just completely distraught, and for good reason. <laughs> and as you're getting ready to see here, that there were people with them here. As you're going to see, let me keep reading. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. Now, there's a couple ways you can take that. One is that he was troubled at their, maybe at their slight doubt that everything was going to be okay, that he was going to save the day and take care of the problem. I don't know about that, though. Because it says that he wept. I, what I believe is that him being God manifested in the flesh, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. What I believe is this. I believe that in that moment, in that moment, he was that humanity part, that human body part, that the emotions 
was showing. And, and, and he, it, it, the, the scripture says that he was a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. And I believe that this happened in that we were, we would see him experience what we experience. These were his friends. They had been good to him in his physical life here on earth. And they took care of him. He'd stayed with them, no doubt. No doubt he had eaten many meals with them. They're wonderful people to him. And then seeing them and, and others, I mean, they're, they're com the community's gathering around and no doubt, I mean, these people, you know, Lazarus was a was an amazing guy. Why, why didn't this guy come quicker? The shortest verse in the Bible, John eleven thirty five. 35. Oh, hold on, let me read 34. And he said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Verse 35, the shortest verse in the Bible. 36, then the, then the Jews said, see how he loved him. That's another reason why I think it was a sign of grief. And some of them said, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? And y'all, um, <laughs> he under, not only does he understand Hold on, bear with me while I turn my notes. Uh, yes, I am using some notes. <laughs> um, not, this isn't scripted, but I do have some important key spots to remember. But, you know, our, our humanity keeps us from comprehending who Jesus is. Uh, as these people here, could not this man, no, number one, they're still saying this man. They're, they're, they don't fully recognize who he is. It hasn't been revealed to them. And it, 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 it kept them, their doubt in the situation. I'm not saying that they totally doubted him, but their, their questioning, their cynicism was definitely learnt, leading them to doubt, to doubt him and their, their humanity. Verse 39. Here, I'm getting ready to read this. Verse 38, I'm sorry. Then Jesus again groaning in himself came to the tomb, grieving in himself, groaning in himself. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead four days. <laughs> Our human logic and reasons, reasoning, that, that holds us back, y'all, to the point of... It, it it makes us work against God. It truly does. That pr prime example, God, this situation is horrible. It it literally even stinks. <laughs> that like this is this is just a horrible time, God. You know, if if, if something if something even. This has gotten so bad, Lord, because you didn't make a move that if something happens now, it's going to make everything worse. It can't, it's, it can't get any worse than what it already is, but if it does get worse, it's going to get that much more worse. That's what our human reasoning does. It does not comprehend the things of God. It only comprehends what we can see, taste, feel, smell, and touch. It does not comprehend what the Holy Spirit can do. Verses 41 to 42, we're going to go ahead with that. Verse 40, Jesus said to her, did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I'm just going to go ahead and read the rest of this. And I know that you always hear me, because, but because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Now when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth! And he who had died came out, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus said to them, Loose him and let him go. So, what do we do with that? 
What, what do we take away from that? In spite of our lack of comprehension due to our own reasoning that's built into us, he's still patient with us. He still helps us believe since he helps us believe because he is a good shepherd, the king of kings, the lord of lords. His, his and then as he brings forth Lazarus, it nothing is more powerful than that, guys. It, he's still patient with us in our time of struggle, in our time of need, when we doubt him. Y'all, it's absolutely unbelievable how loving and kind he is to us. And you have to remember this in your suffering. There's always a reason for it. And you say, yeah, well, it doesn't feel that way. Well, guys, if God is in complete control, and I believe he is, then if this happened in his, in his grand plan and design, then he is the only one who can help you through it. No one else. Whoever's in control of something is the one who's in control of it. No one else. And so since he's in control of it all, thank God that he is. I praise him that he's in control of it all. Then he's the only way you can make it through it. And if you're not leaning on him and you're trusting in yourself, then you're going to have a false sense of hope and security. Even in the disgustingness of the situation, when things start getting better, and we all know how that goes, things start getting better in life, but there's still these memories, and uh, it, it still hurts, and the, the, the feeling of being hurt is still there, and we don't trust, you know, we don't find rest quite yet. We're starting to get peace, but we still don't have peace. This is this is what I hope this means to you. When he says, loose him and let him go, this is how we apply this to our lives. Not only is he commanding this for Lazarus in, in the moment, but as we rise out of our grief, as he, as he resurrects us out of grief and suffering and pain, y'all, it when he says, loose him, him and let him go it means that we are forever loosed from whatever that was we may still have memories of it we will remember who died we'll remember what we lost we'll remember the 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 trial but it was all for our glory all of this happened remember what he said in verse 42 and I know that you always hear me, but because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. The trial is to increase your faith and to even more increase your love in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God who sent him. So y'all, I hope and pray that this has been a blessing. And I know that things things have happened in life. Some things are just never quite the same. And I, I get that. Trust me, y'all. I, I get it. I live this life just like y'all. There are, there are struggles, troubles and struggles that fight me every day memories of things that could have been better and things that are no longer with me. But Christ is in control of it all and sovereign over it all. Friends, if you got value from this, like, subscribe, share. Stay tuned for more videos. I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving here, 2022. And uh, may your days be filled with peace, glory, and strength from God our Father above. Act like men.